Hey guys, my name is Richard Taylor and this is Hold My Hand Wholesale. Today we are going to be going in depth into a pitch for a cash offer that I made yesterday. Now this was one of the most advanced negotiations that I have ever had. And now when you guys think of advanced, you may be thinking of technical terms and terminology and all these crazy things that I'm saying. When I say advanced, I mean that you cannot decipher between the negotiation that I say and whether or not I'm making an actual comment. So essentially throughout this conversation, I was talking to him as if he were my business partner and friend. It does not sound like a negotiation, but he came way down on price, way down on price. I'm talking like $35,000 down on a house where he's asking 140. That's going from 140,000 to 100 and 105,000. Actually, we pitched a number between 100 and 115,000 and towards the end of it, he used some terminology that my YouTube editor may have to bleep out, but he was extremely excited after the conversation that we had and it opened an opportunity for us to make a $20,000 assignment fee virtually in Cleveland, Ohio. All right, guys, let's jump into it right now. Hi, Kurt just got off and I'm answering the phone. Did you have a property that you were looking to sell? Uh, my wife wants to sell and I, I'm, I'm more hesitant to hold on to it, but I think she gave you gave my information to you. Oh, awesome, awesome. I actually do not have the address we're calling about. Let's talk about that right now if it's an okay time. Yeah, I, I don't have much time, but I do have about five, ten minutes if that. Yeah. Guys, this call went way over five, 10 minutes. That's what was happening. I, I mean, when I say that's what was happening, I mean to say that when we were talking to him, it didn't feel like time was passing. People say, oh, time flies when you're having fun, but literally time flies when you're having fun if the negotiation is extremely positive and everybody's extremely transparent, straightforward. This just goes amazing. You see that from the beginning, he's sort of hesitant. He says, you know, my wife wants to sell and I'm really wanting to hold on to it. Just wait to the word that he uses at the end of this phone call. It, it, it's safe to say that he wants to sell after this call. Yeah, we'll talk real quickly. What's your address? Uh, 3277 West 130th. West. Good area. Yeah, yeah. We, we bought it at a good time. Oh, yeah. Just pulling that up right now. Are you local or are you are you national? We are nationwide. Nationwide, got it. Correct. Okay. So no. Four beds, one point five baths, thirteen fifty four square feet. Does that sound about right? Um, it's now uh, I would say three beds. They, I think that they, it's been a while since I've been into the property, but they converted the. We, we if I remember correctly, the one of the bedrooms was turned into like an extended living room. So just the it's three beds now. Got it. Got it. Okay. Okay. So, and what about bathrooms? Is it still one bathroom and then that half bathroom? Yeah, it is a one bathroom, one full, and then one half in the basement. Okay, got it. And are you Jason? I see there's a Jason owner on here as well as Ashley. Yeah. Yes. Okay, got yeah. it. Nice to meet you, Jason. My name's Richard Taylor. Nice to meet you, Richard. Okay, so four beds or three beds, 1.5 baths, lot size 4,340, and built in 1924, correct? Correct. Okay, got it. What is the interior condition? Guys, I want you to know that every single question I asked right there, like, okay, is it a four bed, 1.5 baths? Was it built in 1927? Is the lot size this? I am asking questions that I already know the answer to, to break down a barrier. In the beginning of this call, he's like, oh, well, you know, my wife wants to sell, but I don't really know. So we talked to him about some things that are really just basic information to get the conversation going. We're talking about things that I already know and then the negotiation starts. By the way, the negotiation has not started at this point. We are just breaking down the ice to begin to talk about numbers and situations that explain why I need to be where I need to be in terms of price. ...of the property as it sits right now. Cosmetically, it's, it's in good condition. We just had quite a bit of uh, repairs done to it, including new new hardwood laminate flooring, new paint, um, new stairs. Uh, stairs were uh, updated. Carpet was clean. The walls were painted. So it, the whole house was painted. Uh, so the, the, the cosmetically, it is in really good shape. Um, in terms of mechanical, I think the... Uh, I don't know if that's what you... I didn't know that you didn't ask that, but I'll, I'll, I'll tell you. <laughs> Mechanical-wise, the furnace is in good, great condition. Guys, notice who's doing most of the talking. He is. He is currently selling his property to me, even though I reached out to buy his property. That's how we want to position ourselves 
in every negotiation. We don't want to say, oh, you know, I can close really fast. This is a cash offer. You know, we can get this done so easy for you. You won't have to worry about a thing because there's sort of this policy of sometimes or things are too good to be true. And when we tell a seller, look, man, we can do all of this amazing stuff right now. We're better than everybody else. He starts to think, wait a second, why is this just happening? This might be a little bit too good to be true. So we reverse the roles and we have the seller sell us the property. Questions that can get that ball rolling are things like, so can you tell me about your neighborhood or is this really a good area? I'm not super familiar with this neighborhood around here. Have you liked it? And they start saying, well, you know, I have liked it and this and this and this, but, and then you expand on the but. Oh, what do you mean that there's needles on your street next to you? And then we expand on that and he's like, wow, well, maybe I don't live in the best area in the world. He actually does live in a great area, but we talk to them about all of these things. They sell the house to us and then we ask them questions about the things that they brought up. You'll notice right there, he says, well, you haven't asked about it, but I'll tell you anyway. That's, that's the best thing that can happen in an entire call. Just wait, it's about to get a lot better. The air conditioning probably has about a year or two left on it, maybe less. Okay. Uh, you know what? The thing was installed the year. I'm sorry, I don't. I, I don't. Um, we, we uh, yeah, I have not been in the house for a while. We have a tenant, a long term tenant in the house, right? Oh, okay. So, well, before we go any further, if we were to come to an agreement, is the tenant able to vacate the property at closing? Probably not. No, it would be a, I think he's in a six month term. So I think he would be like three or I think he's like three months into that six month term. So it would be about three months. Yeah. Okay. Oh, well, and um, what is the current rent that you were charging that tenant? Uh, it's a thousand dollars a month. Okay. Do you believe that to be fair market rent for your property? No, absolutely not. It, the fair market is probably thirteen to fourteen hundred. Okay. And is this like a family friend or somebody? Well, I guess what I'm asking, full transparency, is he going to throw or is he or she going to have an issue? if we want to charge them fair market rent while they're living in the property while we buy it? Um, not that I am aware of. The long story short, essentially, the reason I give them a discount is because they are very low maintenance and uh, I just I just don't have a lot of time in, to invest into it. Okay, I will so say I don't think so. and ruffle some feathers when we take title on the property and we have a tenant in place and they're like, hey, we've been charged this much rent for this long. And I'm like, yeah, uh, maybe you had a relationship with your prior landlord. Don't take this personally, it's business. We have to charge what the market dictates for rent because if you won't pay it, somebody else will. And sometimes they don't want to hear that. So. Is this person level-headed? I mean, I, I really want to avoid conflict more than anything. Yeah, at the end of the day, um, as long as I think, I think the property may need some minor repairs like an air conditioning unit. And, and once the air conditioning, I mean, if those things are fulfilled, I don't think they're at that. I don't think you'd have any problem. I mean, he's been very level as I have never had an issue with something. Good. Good. And rent on time? Yeah, rent, rent is actually early. Uh, oh, nice. Never, never calls, never calls for anything. I mean, I think the last time I had a replacement. Notice he's still selling his house to me. He's still talking the most, which is actually what we want. We don't want to try to over explain. We want them to list the issues with their property. But now he's not listing the issues. He's saying, oh, well, this is a good investment because, you know, my, my tenant actually pays rent early and they're such a good tenant i mean yeah you shouldn't have any issues with them so the questions we ask get him to sell the property to us screen on the window he asked and then there was a uh, there was a raccoon problem in one of the uh, in the backyard and then we took care of that immediately so i mean he was, he's been very cordial respectful and he, he pays on time and he, he really doesn't give me a lot of headaches excellent excellent and and just so we're on the same page it kind of sounds like ashley's the one who wants to sell based on what you told me and you're still thinking about it is how long do you think it's gonna take you to make a decision if i were to make you an offer as to whether or not you actually want to sell um uh that's a great question i would say did you hear what he said right there he said, that's a great question. I just asked one of the hardest questions in the entire negotiation, but because of the way I phrased it, he didn't know it was a negotiation question. When I said, yeah, so it kind of seems like your wife is the one who's wanting to sell. I mean, how on board are you with this process? Do you know what I'm asking guys? What's your motivation? What's your motivation to sell this property? I mean, we can't say what's your motivation to sell this property. We cannot say that. The seller will be like, um, are you searching for people with high motivation to sell? Are you targeting me? No, 
We just ask questions that are general life questions about, you know, you and your wife and if you've come to a decision, which uncover the motivation. Negotiation is all about saying things without directly saying them. You know, I need to have his house at a discount. But if I approach him and say, hey, I'm going to be lowballing you. Well, uh, what is what, what 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 is he going to say to that? Um, oh, OK, let's keep having this conversation. No, absolutely not. He's going to hang up the phone right then and there, which is why we say something that indirectly expresses that we are an investor looking for a discounted property. And he understands that based on our conversation so far. And he's still trying to sell it to us. Quick thing, guys, if if this is something that works for my company, I'm positioning myself as, hey, I don't know if I can do this, if this works for my company. I fully understand that selling a house is not a decision to be made overnight, so I want to give you more than enough time to think about this after we discuss the number. Did you have a price in mind for the property? Yeah, so you know, commercially, it, it, it's the retailer, it's the tenant of the left, we probably did not sell it um, to a realtor. By the way, when we got this lead, the number that he sent us over text because we generated this guy from text blasting and then when he received our text, he called and I picked up. When we got this lead, he was asking $140,000, but because we've built such good rapport six minutes into the phone call, by the way, this is where it was supposed to end. We're not even halfway done. Remember he said he had five to 10 minutes. It was supposed to end right here and we're just having a great conversation. There was no reason to end it. Which I'd like to avoid those, but I, I, I was thinking about it's hard. I don't even know how to evaluate a house at this point in time. And, and the way that the market is, is just nuts. But I mean, it, the, most of the, the estimates I've seen, that it's, it's worth about 140000 retail. Okay. Okay. So selling it wholesale, obviously, I'd probably sell it a little bit cheaper, but I could probably be around that, around that price. Um, because it's running a property in an, an upcoming area. Okay, no, 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 I totally agree with you. This is a beautiful area. We've done flips in this area before. No argument on that front. Totally agree. Um, only thing I'm agree and accept, then push back. No, you are totally right about this. I just don't know if my company can do this at this time. That's how we want to be coming across to all of these sellers. Concerned about is in these older properties. Maybe we have some issues with foundation. So if you had an inspection done in the past five to 10 years, it tells you about structural integrity of the property. So I did an inspection. Uh, I did not specific. So I had an inspector who inspected the, and uh, bear with me on this. So I, I had an inspector who inspected the foundation, but I did not have a foundation inspector. So it was a general inspector who, who just casually did a full inspection of the house. It wasn't an actual um, foundation inspector that, 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 that checked it out, if that makes sense. That's really, really helpful. How, when did that happen? I'd love to take a look at it. It was about two years ago. Uh, oh. I could probably, I could probably pull that up. Oh my gosh, that would be such a huge help if I could take a look at that. We have this sort of thing about properties in Atlanta recently, and one thing that I like yeah. about properties aren't as old. So when we do have a house in Cleveland, I'm interested in it, but I really, really want to see that inspection report just so I know, you know, what the major issues are in the property. And, uh, you know, we don't, we don't have to spend as much time going over that, you and I. Yeah, I, I think I, I could take that up. It might take me a, a couple of days to find it, oh, uh, okay. but I, I don't think it'd be an issue. Yeah, no, no, no. Well, uh, and again, I want to like take all your time in the world in this. It's not something to be rushed. So um, we'll, we'll continue to follow up maybe once a week or so just to see if you're still interested. Um, yeah. I would love to be the person who gets to purchase your property. I realize it's a competitive market. But um, we would be coming in around the 100 to 115 range. So I just want to make you aware of that. Pretty close to what you're at. Alternatively, though, we'll pay your closing costs. And I'm not a realtor, so there's not going to be any sort of fees associated with selling. So the main thing in negotiation is to pull the price out of the seller first, which is what I did. He said, yeah, I'm looking to get $140,000 for the property. And I was like, okay, now I know his starting point. So people can text that, but when they say it over the phone, it's a whole different story. So I pulled the price out of him first. By the way, the prop stream estimate on this is about $185,000. He says 140, that's already a good deal for us. I'm currently winning the negotiation because it positions me to go even lower by bringing in something about the property. So the, the, what I used in the property because his house was in such good shape is, hey, look, 
This is a property built 100 years ago. We're dealing with some fix and flips in Atlanta, which we actually are. I don't mean dealing with, I mean, we're flipping two houses in Atlanta right now, and you guys are gonna see YouTube videos on all of those. But separate from that, the two properties we're flipping in Atlanta, one of them was built in 1996. Being in that it was built in 1996, I mean, it's gonna have a lot less issues. The foundation, perfect. The roof, probably still pretty good. The siding, good. The paint, good. The floors, good. Everything in the property is going to be good. And it's actually a wholesale, not a fix and flip, meaning we don't do any rehab on it. We just list it right on the retail market for a retail buyer to buy it because it's in such good condition that a family would wanna live in it. Guys, there are so many different exit strategies on this, and it's important that we tell the sellers what we're working on in other markets. One, to build our reputation, and two, to say, hey, this is a bit of a risk for me. I'm gonna need to be here if this is gonna work. And just wait. Remember I talked about the, a word that this guy used? It's about to be said. I mean, meaning that if we agree right, that's the actual number that's gonna show up in your bank account. How, how quickly can you guys close? I he asked me that. We always throw in, oh yeah, and by the way, I can close in like uh, two weeks. He asked me, guys. Remember at the beginning of this video, I said, we don't just wanna say, oh yeah, I can make a cash offer, I can pay your closing costs, and I can pay quickly, or and I can close quickly. We don't wanna say that stuff just off the bat to let them know. We wanna say, here's my offer. Oh, and by the way, these are all the amazing things that come with my offer. So when he was asking me and when he said, how quickly can you close? It opened an opportunity for me to say, oh my gosh, perfect. You're probably expecting me to say two months, two weeks. Two weeks, assuming the inspection. So if, if, if the inspection report is something that interests me, and then I, I will let you know if the inspection report is good, I'm still gonna wanna send in my guy just to see if anything has changed. In the so also guys, if, I really, really, really highlight if in my negotiation. I don't wanna make it seem like this is a home run to the seller and that he has me in the bag. I don't want him to make, I don't want to make him feel like that either, but that's kind of the reality of where this is right now. The past two years, of course, of course, that would happen. The past two years, it's gonna be perfect. Yeah, no, of course, okay. So we're looking around the 115 is, is, is where you guys would think you're at. You can use a look at inspection. Uh, awesome. Uh, area. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to figure out, hey, what can I sell this guy's house for if I put it in an entirely new kit? And then he said my offer. And then he said my offer. So we got him to say the price first, and then I said a range, and then he said another price. So when I gave my range, it was pretty wide. It was a $15,000 range on a $140,000 property. So the percentage of that, that's like a 10% range of the entire value in, in between where the numbers could be. So he has now said the top of my range and the 115 is now his new asking price. And what does it mean when the top of my range is his new asking price? I can come in closer to the bottom of my range and say, oh yeah, you know, by the way, this is what you were asking. When in reality, I set a range and that became his asking price. And then I'm gonna say, you know, I'd love to hit your asking price of 115, but I'm gonna need to come in at 108 for this reason. That's how you get $40,000 assignment fees, guys. This one's not 40, it's 20, but that's how you do it. We're actually going to be moving away from Cleveland because it's a bit of a beginner market and we're looking for more advanced high equity markets and Cleveland is not really that. It's a great place to start, and I started there and I built my business there, but now it's time to branch out to a market that's more expensive, better equities, better homes, and bigger assignment fees. Kitchen, new bathroom, new floors, and then we're gonna offer less the repairs, so it's gonna be close to what you get with the filter after you pay all of those. Yeah, okay, wait, 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 I'm sorry, say that last part one more time. So my offer is gonna be close to what you would get from selling your house with a realtor, the only difference right. is we don't charge any fees and I can do it really quickly without walking all of these buyers through your house. I understand, I understand, I got it, yeah, okay. Yeah, no, 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 I, I, I appreciate that. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Now, this is definitely an area that interests me. I've invested here before, um, and I want to keep you uh, in the loop just so we can continue talking, but if you could send that inspection to my email, that would be such a huge help. 
Also guys, notice that I didn't try to get him to sign right now. So we landed on a price, a price that actually works for me. I could totally sign at 115. But when we give the seller the impression of, oh, let's do this today, let's do this now, let's do this today, it's really scary for them. We actually wanna like kind of stand off and be like, you know what, let's do this on your own time. I don't need this. I mean, I would like it, but I don't need this. And showing them that we don't need this by not sending him a contract today, actually builds up our reputation and our rapport in the conversation. He's like, oh, this is an investor dealing with a number of other properties, and if it isn't perfect for him, he's not gonna take it. Yeah, yeah, if you, if you don't mind, um, can you shoot me an email with your information? Yes, I can, yes, I can, thank you. And I'm actually glad you asked because that's a bit of a complicated email, I need to change it. Um, what yeah, is the email? Yeah. So my email is property, J-R-M, J-R-M, at gmail.com. Yeah, my, my wife is very eager to get rid of it. I, I, I want to hold on to it, but I have a feeling I usually win. I lose these battles. So I, uh, I'll have a conversation with her. Two um, things about that. First thing, happy wife, happy life. Second thing. <laughs> Do you hear him laugh? We just ended, we just said a number that was way below what he was looking to get. And towards the end of the conversation, he laughs. He still hasn't said that word that I've been talking about, but I, I'll show you. I don't want to get demonetized. I'm not really sure what I can say on here and what I can't say on here. And if YouTube is going to pay me if I say a no, no word. So we're going to let him say it instead of me. Currently raising interest rates, as you know, we just got mm -hmm. uh, our approved and the interest rate is 7.8% which is very, very, very hot. So from the perspective of a flipper like myself, I am not going to be flipping as many properties because the cost of borrowing money is a lot more. That indicates that we're about to come into a recession. So the Fed is trying to induce a recession. Now is one of the best times to sell your house. And I think your wife may know that given what's happening on mm -hmm. the Right, right. Anyway, oh, good. Oh, okay, send you an email right now. The, the email you is property. J R M at gmail.com, correct? Yeah, that's correct. Excellent. So this email is the one to send the inspection report to. I'm just gonna um, Brandon Taylor Properties and the subject. Um, hello, please send your inspection report here. All right, that should be with you now, and I'm looking forward to talking to you again. Yeah, thanks for your time. Talk to you soon. Take care. All right, talk soon. Have a good one. Bye bye. Bye. I'm actually surprised guys. I think I may have gotten this mixed up with another conversation, but I'm going to tell you what this seller said to me. And I also want to do another video on it because I really thought he was gonna say that during the conversation. But essentially when I pitched to a seller one or two days ago, when I set a price range, he said, quote unquote, I am pissing myself over that price. We bought it at a much lower price. So essentially, he has dollar signs in his eyes. Ah, I wanna do another video on this, guys. I apologize. I got you worked up the entire video trying to say that we were gonna hear the seller say, I'm pissing myself over that price. That was what, what I was talking about, but unfortunately, wrong conversation. I'm definitely gonna film another YouTube video right after this where we go into it, but that was the whole thing. We went from the seller saying, you know, I'm not really sure it's my wife who wants to sell to him giving us timeline, motivation, price. I'm gonna say that again. Timeline, motivation, price. One more time, I'm a broken record. Timeline, motivation, price. Over a 12 minute conversation, we gather all of those things without him knowing that we gathered them. He said it all in the video, but he didn't know he said it all. Anyways guys, that is all I have for today. Thank you so much for watching Hold My Hand Wholesale. I'm gonna definitely be filming another one after this, but definitely hit the subscribe button if you enjoy the content. If you are not enjoying the content, just continue to watch and hopefully I can turn you into a subscriber one day. Thanks guys.